we come right back into Vermont. A good afternoon to you once again with John Kovach. I'm Rob Adams. 146 on this Friday afternoon, and uh, we bring another guest to the building. Every now and then you hang around a town long enough to have your question answered. Yes. And we had a couple of guests today. Oh, and my children went to BBA. Yes. Oh, and I sent my kids to BBA. And I kind of had a feel like I knew what it was, but now we're going to find out. Find out exactly what it is. Directly from somebody from Burr and Burton Academy, or BBA. Mark Tastian, the headmaster, joining us. He's repping in his Under Armour Protect This House shirt. I like it. Burr and Burton uh, Bulldogs, I take it is. Yes, it is. Mark, this is a 185-year-old school. That is correct. How did you end up there? Well, I had kind of a circuitous journey. Um, I, I want to start by saying I thought this was a radio broadcast. <laughs> and so I didn't exactly dress to look you're, like the headmaster. You're, you're repping. You're well, repping well, the school. I That's appreciate it. that. And, I'm a football um, coach. I would have worn the, 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 fo- you know, well, the, the love there of you football go. So, There so you go. Maybe you can think of me more as a coach, but I'm actually, I am the headmaster of this school, mm-hmm. 185 years. We've been in existence. Um, way back when, the school was founded as an independent school, as a private school, and Back then, that's all that existed for education in Vermont. So you'd have a private school, and it served the local community. So they didn't have public schools. They, they did just not. Had the public school hmm. system had not yet been created. So Burn Burton was established, again, to provide education for all. That is the unique position, and we've grown into this unique position, where we still are an independent school. We're still a private school, yet we serve the public. So that's why you, when, you, when people come through and they talk about BBA, we we educate virtually every young person in our, in our sending towns. Oh, wow. Wow. So, and what are those sending towns? Well, I could list them out. There, there are 13 of them, and they are all, you know, all in all this area. Greater Manchester, yeah. Dorset, greater Manchester. Londonderry, Peru, you know, the mountain towns, towns down in the valley. And if you live in any one of those towns... You're essentially guaranteed admission to this school, and the town pays the tuition. So you come here. Your, your public school is a private school. Wow. How about that? So I, I, that, I never knew that, and it really right. is a fascinating concept. It's a, it's a different kind of concept. And I came up here. I, I know there, there are going to be viewers and listeners down in, in Connecticut. I, I spent time living in Greenwich and Stamford. I have family members in Weston yep, and Wilton. You're right oh, yeah. to our house. Can, can, and nobody has ever heard of the opportunity to go to a private school paid for by your town. No, I think hey. the closest you can come in Connecticut is the state technical school system where yes. you can uh, apply, pass an entrance exam, and attend one of the state-run technical schools where it cycles so that you spend half the year on uh, academics, half learning a trade, and then you come out learning a trade. That's, I think, the closest you can get in Connecticut. Right. That sounds right. And, and, and what you have here is Burton Burton is a school that provides the full range of educational opportunities. So we have kids at the top of the charts going off to Harvard and Yale and Middlebury and Williams and you know, you look at that yeah. top-tier college list, and we look like a top-tier prep school. And we have kids working on vocations and trades. And, you know, and so, so again, and we have kids with, with severe learning differences, significant learning differences, and we have special programs to, for them. So we are a school that must serve all, and, and I think we do a, a pretty good job, to I mean, say there's, the least. there's something for everyone. There, that's the idea. Yeah. The idea, and, and this gets to a little bit of education philosophy. Those of us who loved school, not everyone loved school. Right. But I'm, I'm figuring you were a football coach, therefore you were a football player. Yeah. What got you to school every day, I'm betting, was football. It didn't hurt. It didn't hurt. And a piece of your education was on the field, and a good chunk of your education was also in the classroom. Right. But without the passion that you get, the passion that you found in football, it becomes much more of a chore to go to school. You have to find that passion in each child. That's correct. And use that to draw them. And that is why a lot of times, and and I'll get philosophical for a moment, extracurriculars are always the first thing on the block when the public schools that are taxpayer funded are trying to cut budgets. And yet when you do that, you are 
turning off a percentage of your students That's correct. to the right. school experience. And I call that the downward death spiral because too often schools or budgets face a budget crunch. They cut art. They cut music. They cut recess. They focus on test scores. And they squeeze the joy and the experience of learning, the joy of the experience out of that experience and becomes a chore and kids become disenfranchised with their school. At Burn Burton, we continue to invest in, you call them extracurriculars, we think of our arts and our athletics and our academics as all part of the educational I, experience. I, I really so, would use the term co-curriculars, I think, is a better term. I right. used extracurriculars because that's the That's the what vernacular. people like to call it. But I really think they're co-curricular, and, and it really becomes a place to expand upon the classroom right. lesson. That's I, absolutely right. I, I have to ask, since you're talking to two guys who love broadcasting sports, how, how, uh, how are sports, how are athletics well, at PBA? I'm glad you brought that up because – Five minutes ago, I was standing on our brand new turf field. Nice. We installed a turf That's field great. this summer, and there's a bulldog. You see my little bulldog right here. Yep. There's a bulldog 15 yards long in the center of a field turf field. Nice. Which is, you know, some people think it's astroturf. The 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 the, the, the artificial turf of today is so far it's removed from totally astroturf. Totally different. Right. And and so how are our sports teams doing? Well, they're going to be playing on a state of the art field starting next week because they just finished off that field and it's a pretty exciting place for us to be. Now you're fired up about education. How did you get into the education field? Well, I I spent 13 years in business. I was living down in New York City and I was, I was a partner in a management consulting firm in Greenwich, Connecticut. Um, I changed careers in my mid-30s and started teaching math and science in East Harlem. And it was purely and simply because I believe that education and the discrepancy between what is offered to those who can afford the $40,000 in tuition in New York City yeah. and those who are in the public school system, that discrepancy is huge. And I very much wanted to be part of a solution that brought great education to all yeah. because especially in this day and age, if you're not getting your education, your opportunities become more and more limited in a global economy. So it was Absolutely. very idealistic and on my part I, I just felt like this is what I wanted to do with my life and I, I did it and it's been a labor of love and joy. I work at least as hard if not harder in this profession than I did in management consulting and that I hope starts to s dispel any myth you know the the cynics say that the the best part of teaching is June July and August the best part of teaching is seeing kids fly. That's it. And it is. we're a school that, that, is, that, that we get it. to experience that joy and satisfaction all the time. Not without its challenges, but there's a lot of joy and satisfaction in now, it. Now, as headmaster, do you teach any subjects or do you coach at all? I don't. What I try to do is be around, see everything. You know, and really my job is in, in, a, in a way to be responsible for everything mm -hmm. and at the risk of diminishing myself – to do nothing you know I'm not the answer to any problem what my job is is really to help others and help our school figure out the answers and solve those problems so I don't get to be in the classroom um, I do get to participate a lot mm -hmm. in, in a lot of different areas and I, I get to feel this tremendous pride at, at the kind of school that we are where is the school located from here it's about a mile and a half up the road it's in Manchester uh, the, they call it Manchester Village, mm -hmm. 57 Seminary Avenue, www. Dot, excuse me, www.burburton.org. <laughs> um, and if you look at it, and when I first looked at this school, it looks like a high-end New England prep school. Right. And in a way, that's what we are. The rub being, again, we serve everyone in this community. So you won't be able to go anywhere. You can't walk into a restaurant without having... Burn Burton students, Burn Burton graduates serving you. You know the you know sons and daughters of of police officers, state troopers, doctors, lawyers, small business owners, you name it, landscapers. Right. It they all come together in this community under one roof at Burn Burton. And, and that's what education is supposed to do: is bring people together. That's right. So they all learn from each other. That's correct. By the way, does this uh, new turf field have a press box? 
Here we go. We can, <laughs> we can get Strap you up in, there. Mart. You know I, where I, this I, is going. I'm, I'm going to put a table up for you guys, a couple little chairs. We'll call it a press box. We'll call Deal. it VIP. You come Deal. broadcast a game. Um, we're going to be dedicating this new field on our homecoming weekend, September 19th. If you all want to come up and, and, and have a little broadcast of that event, we'd love to have you. You can smell yeah, the smoke. It's <laughs> You know where this is going. It's That's like when right. you had an electric train and you were a kid and you could smell that motor just start to heat up a little That's bit. That's right. That's where we're going with I'll this. I'll start doing my research on Vermont sports. I fully I, I – You expect fully nothing expect less. It. I fully <laughs> expect it. And I if hope you go we can make to, that happen. I do. Uh, I do too. If you go to burnburton.org, how to apply, everything is on that. It's it's pretty simple. And, you know, and we, we have – every year we have you know, 30 to 40 people – who move into our sending towns, and many times from Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, they come up here because what you can get is incredible scenery, an incredible way of life, uh, a, a world-class bookstore. I know you just had Chris Morrow yeah. on yeah. here. That, that independent bookstore is a gem. You get to live in a gem of a town. You get to access an education that I would hold up to any private school in this country and it's free that's it's an unbelievable great. proposition that is phenomenal so move up to vermont this is a great state this is a great town and i've got a pretty good school for you too we've all loved it here this week so well i'm glad you're here i don't think we can wrap it up any better than mark just did <laughs> nope <laughs> can't do it any better than that well next time i know it'll be on camera i'll shave i'll put on a tie i'll look like the headmaster no problem and we'll see you over at your school all right. Thank you very much. Mark, thank, thank you very much. Mark Tastian of Burn Burton Academy. Fun. A great pleasure.